In its original 6km, 3.7 mile layout, the Fuji Speedway sits in the shadow of Japan's Mount Fuji. The signature mile-long front straightaway is instantly recognizable as the circuit is today. But at its end, a sudden 200 mile per hour drop and shock, first sight of the epic Daiichi Corner. The Daiichi Corner was the only remnant of the original plan for the Speedway. Envisioned as a 2.5 mile high bank NASCAR style oval, the circuit was first penned as the arrival of NASCAR in Japan by the Japan NASCAR Corporation in 1963. Shortly after construction had started, funding fell short and only the first quarter of the oval was completed. Perhaps at the advice of a visiting Sterling Moss, the Mitsubishi Estate Company invested into the partially completed track and filled the rest of the land in with a more traditional snaking road circuit. But the impressive and terrifying Daiichi remained as the circuit's signature first turn. The facility was officially opened in December 1965 with races beginning in 1966. In the mix of sports car and formula racing, drivers noted the circuit's high speed, difficulty and general discomfort with the Daiichi Corner. Famed British Formula One sports car and rally racing driver Vic Elford was noted saying, The reason the banking was so horrific was at the end of the straight we went over a blind crest at around 190 to 200 miles per hour and dropped into the banking. At other tracks, Daytona, Monterley, you climb up the banking. Indeed, the banking at Fuji was a strange construction. The Daiichi corner immediately dropped off the main straight with a wide sweeping bend, descending initially into the Japanese countryside. Upwards of 30 degrees of banking in spots, the profile of the corner was not consistent, ultimately rising towards the end and flattening out into a challenging, tightening radius, never-ending right-hander. For safety, the banking had a thin armco rail around the outside to protect competitors. Despite the safety concerns, the circuit soon attracted top-level motorsport. Jim Clark appeared in a Formula 3 race early in the year, and ultimately USAC, American IndyCar Racing, made a rare postseason exhibition race appearance. Perhaps in response to the safety concerns, USAC decided to race the circuit in a counterclockwise direction, against the usual clockwise direction of the circuit. This made Daiichi the final corner instead of the treacherous first. The Fuji 200 for USAC in 1966 was won by Jackie Stewart ahead of Bobby Unser. The Can-Am series ultimately made an appearance at Fuji in 1968 and unleashed the unrestricted beast on the circuit, once again in a counterclockwise direction on a shortened version of the track. But eventually the inevitable happened. In 1974, Hiroshi Kazato and Saichi Suzuki were both killed in an accident on the high banks of the Daiichi injuring six others and ending racing on the high banks once and for all. The rest, as they say, is history. In 1976, Formula One made their now legendary visit to the monsoon-soaked and abbreviated Fuji Speedway, cementing the circuit as a famous venue and opening the door for racing for many years to come. The track went through various small additions and added chicanes, but ultimately in 2005 the track was reshaped into the Thompson gun-like profile we know today. But even today a small section of the Daiichi is still preserved, reminding those who visit the circuit how truly wild it must have been to dive off the front stretch mile and into the record books. And thankfully, this original Fuji Speedway with the epic Daiichi Corner was recreated for a set of course actually a couple of years ago. It came out in 2017, uh, published by an author, William T. Riker. And I don't know if that's his real name, but it's a conversion of a track from GT Legends with a bunch of work done on it for a set of Corsa to add all of the additional features and things that a set of Corsa can have. And it looks like a, a very much a first party, a set of Corsa track and something that I've been wanting to show for a really long time 
long time, but trying to find the right thing to show it. The Speedway itself had a really amazing history with the development of the Can-Am cars for Japan, and uh, it's another story to tell at another time. I've been waiting a while to see if the Toyota 7 is going to be finished for a set of Corsa, but it's still underway. Uh, but I saw some photos of the Fuji Speedway recently and remembered the USAC race and everything there, and also remembered that a new skin pack had come out for the Pesio Pork Nose, which I looked at pretty recently. The skin pack is made by Mr. Brain Down over at Race Department, and highly recommend checking it out. He does actually a lot of skins for the Pesio cars, but this set itself, the liveries for Indy in the 60s were beautiful, very colorful and everything. So it's absolutely, if you're going to race the Pesio, I highly recommend downloading this. And I uh, thought it might be a fun pairing to finally show off this awesome track. I think folks would really like to see it. And it's one, because it came out a few years ago, I think uh, maybe some have forgotten about. So I'm going to do a race here in the Pesio, dressed up as the 1968 Indy 500 grid, uh, driving Bobby Unser's car, because of course, he passed away recently. And maybe I can get Bobby Unser that win since he finished second in 1966 here. So it's not exactly like the 66 ESAC race. We're going to be going in the opposite direction, the uh, crazy direction going into Daiichi, but thought it might be a cool combo to at least show this track off and make sure everybody remembers that it exists. This is an absolutely insane circuit, so I hope this one's interesting for you. Let's get started with the race. Alright, so here we are at the back of the grid. Eight laps at Fuji. This should be a good one. Lights are lit. Out, we're underway. Alright, get a good launch off the line, a little bit of a burnout, and then drag race down towards the first corner. Up the gears, fourth gear there, with everybody snaking back and forth trying to find a spot on the track. But now we'll see the track in front's gonna drop away. Cars going over the edge, up to fifth gear and into the Daichi for the first time. Hold your breath, sparks dancing up in front from cars, everybody jostling around on the ultra high banking, but now we'll come towards the end of the corner and slow down, break down to fourth gear. I'm on the inside, see if I can pass a few of these cars. Down to third. Ooh. Almost out breaking myself. Oh, the three in front, spinning out. Oh, able to get by him. Didn't think that was going to last long. It's one of the STP cars, I think. All right, we'll just compose ourselves again. Do this left-hander now. Track narrows up so much here. We got a spot, pretty heavy braking here towards the end of the left-hander. Third gear, be a little quicker on a hot lap without everybody fighting side by side. Oh, very slow here on the throttle and head up the hill towards the hairpin then down a second gear locking up the right front a little bit but on the inside line passing a couple more cars so that two cars spinning helped me out quite a bit i think we'll come through 300 r now a little bit of a jump i got a car side by side with me so we'll head in the shadow of mount fuji towards the last corner the outside not sure where that car on the inside is down to third gear just want to try to maximize the exit here onto the front straightaway there we go come and complete the first lap then in the slipstream the car right behind me still i think i'm clear of that car to my right but up to p8 after the first lap and i got gordon john cock in front and wally dolan back behind me so in good company so come over into the first corner once again flat out this time, lifting just a little bit to get the car to turn on the high side. It's almost got progressive banking, so you can use that to your advantage. Try to get the high line this time without going too far. There's just dirt on the outside. All right, able to get around the outside, though, of a car. I got John Cock right in front of me in that blue car, I think. throttle here towards the exit you can see just how bumpy the circuit is and i absolutely love the detail the creators put into this surface here because obviously you're not gonna be able to scan something like this and i get up the inside of john cock he gave that to me luckily obviously they wouldn't have scanned something like this and so you're working from photographs you're working from videos and uh just general guesses based off of what drivers said about it and so just the detail in my opinion is very 
unbelievable and that's all it really has to be we're never going to have the actual track but based off of pictures and videos and everything uh, this is what the track seemed like it was very much not a perfect racetrack in any regard but altogether very interesting track so come out of the final corner a couple cars in front Let's see if i can get a good draft here down the front straight away Try to shift at the last second. The gears, we've got six laps to go. The gears are not perfect, but there's only two settings in the Pesio here. They're shorter, long for two different track types. So I had to go with the long ones up the inside into Daichi. Just trusting the suspension and tires make it, which in the 60s, everything was really being tested. So I don't know how confident it would have been right down to third gear definitely would take some muscle to get the cars around here flat out two behind me are right there as well I got this yellow car right in front absolutely love these paint schemes the Pesio of course is not the perfect car to be racing 60s USAC cars with I think it's quite down on power compared but it's uh, a lot of fun oh it's very slow a lot of fun to drive it's a very realistic feeling car so it's great around a track that has so much detail like this just understeer a little bit through the hairpin but block the car that I dove underneath get that position as well to see where I am because I'm passing quite a lot of cars oh, over the bump there into 300R. Just a breath of the throttle and down to third gear. I'm trying to get this as late as possible onto the front straightaway. There we go. I think come up to way five laps to go oh p3 already so i got the two liters right in front johnny rutherford's the one immediately in front of me we'll throw it once again into daichi there we go flat out that time It'll be absolutely awesome to watch that as a spectator oh rutherford's gonna block a little bit or at least make it difficult to get the car in the right line. Nice exit, but nowhere really to pass here. The track's so narrow. This will come down to 100R. Saw a little bit of chaos on the first lap. Seems to be hit or miss whether or not a race has some accidents. So caught the inside of Rutherford then. Able to get alongside him at least. I don't see him there anymore. Take the line. Oh, there he was. Just size wheel. Coming into 300R. It's a sketchy place to go side by side. Rutherford up the inside. Don't want to be side by side through here. Rather pass him on the straightaway. Still have a car right behind me as well. White car is on the mirror. But the AI, as you can see, they race pretty well around here, especially in the low downforce cars, which a set of course it tends to have a lot of problems with. So good work by the creators as well to put some really good AI that I think they knew folks would want to race. It's on the outside now is a nice duel with these three cars. I think it's Sam Sessions in front. Come up the inside of Rutherford. Oh, Sessions as well. Broke very heavily there. Get it down to third gear though. Try to maximize the exit. So out into the lead from 20th position after some chaos on the first lap. Let's see if I can put together a few good laps here. A little bit wide there. Come up to the hairpin. Ooh, Art Pollard retiring. 
would have driven one of the Granatelli turbine cars. This paint livery set, like I said, is based off the 68 Indy 500, and the liveries are absolutely beautiful. Um, obviously, the car is not the correct one, but it, for most of them, it fits, but the STP turbines obviously are one where it's doesn't really look the part as an oversteer coming on or understeer coming onto the final corner make it look like I meant to do that and I think racing this track in the other direction too like they actually did for USAC uh, would have been a good layout to race on too I've done a few practice laps around it uh, but obviously it doesn't have the dramatic effect with the Daichi corner like we have here drop into it this time flat out no cars to worry about to watch cars rocking around and just fear that you were going to see something terrible. Down a fourth gear. Definitely a challenging track to drive on and it's really like no track that I really know. It's very unique. The banking, the really long corners, the ultra bumpy surface. It's a challenge but very enjoyable at the same time. The first time you actually get laps around here without throwing it off into the guardrail. Uh, it's quite satisfying as I run wide there again. Down to second. This corner is very easy to overrun. Track's quite wide on the exit. Let's so try to use every inch of it there. The scenery as well, obviously, combined with some data for the terrain because you have the beautiful Mount Fuji in the background uh, but then all of the objects and things next to the track you know love to see the vintage Japanese billboards and everything really makes it feel the part I haven't looked at what this track looked like in GTL but I'm sure there was quite a bit of work done on it because I can tell some of the stuff here is very much for a set of Corsa but two more laps P1 got 4.4 seconds the AI have that problem that once you get good at a track and <laughs> clearly not even that good at it they're just a little too slow but fun to uh, try to avoid for the first few laps there but have to do some work on them to get them to go a bit quicker i guess but still could always throw it away this car is surprisingly challenging to drive as i get the rear end happy there Whoa, catch it did, like I said, make it understeer quite a bit with the diff settings just so that through the fast corner there wouldn't do what I just did and kick out the rear end. It's very easy to do that. So we can finally get this corner. Ugh, not quite. <laughs> I took the line way differently that time. Right down a second. Grab. There's a little curbing there in the dirt. But overall, love to race a bunch of different cars around this track. Obviously, these open wheelers like this, but the Can Am beasts as well. Uh, even in this direction, although they didn't do that in real life, I think it would be really fun. There's, of course, the whole history of the Toyota 7, and that's a car that's being worked on, so it might be something, once that's finally finished, uh, could be driven here. We'll come across the line, get the white flag. I guess they would have done that. Let's do one more lap to go. Pulled it out to six seconds over Jim Malloy in second. Into the Daichi for one more time. Ultimate faith in the equipment. Come to the exit. Down a fourth gear. Dance the car a little bit. Touch the grass there to the left. I think I've taken a different line through all of these corners pretty much every lap. And that's the way Fuji races sometimes. Let's see if I can finally get this one right on the last lap. But of course not. Miss it. Go a little wide. Gather it back up. Head up to the hairpin. Try 
wanted to outbreak myself here. Accelerated out nice. Bobby Unser's beautiful 1968 Indianapolis 500 winning livery here has done the trick. Come up to the last corner, which is actually the name for the corner on the track maps. It was just called Last Corner. We'll take this one here conservatively, get onto the front straightaway, and win this little fun race at Fuji 68. What a very, very cool track. So another really awesome historical track to drive on and read about and learn about and then appreciate even more. And it's absolutely unreal that this track actually existed in what we just drove. But uh, like I said, when I was driving from photographs and videos, this really does look spot on. And so this was an insane facility when it launched. And I don't blame some of the drivers from uh, chickening out and ultimately the circuit changing itself. But Fuji Speedway, of course, it still exists like I mentioned earlier on and so uh, it's neat to see where it came from and there are quite a lot of uh, elements of the circuit that are still there but of course the Daiichi corner is is the main thing that uh, really draws this one out so I hope you enjoyed it these classic tracks continue to provide endless enjoyment in a set of Corsa and I know there's actually many more coming quite soon so until then thank you for watching and I'll see you all again next time